Welcome to Erisag, Nova Scotia. Come with us as we travel through time. Feel the heat of lava flows. Hold your breath when the sea invades the land. And life reestablish itself, only to be destroyed by storm after storm. It's all here, written in the rocks. Airsag is located on Highway 245 on the Nova Scotia shore of the Northumberland Strait. However, 600 million years ago, it was attached to a different continent, and its geology records its path from that continent to its collision with the future North America some 420 million years ago. The community was founded in 1785 by Scottish immigrants who named it after their home Airsag in Western Highlands of Scotland. It is home to a fishing fleet that catches lobster for a local processing plant, the story of which is told at the Lobster Interpretation Center on the wharf. Today our story starts much earlier and begins here at the lighthouse. We will be stopping at key places along the shore to read the story in the rocks, minerals and fossils. We'll take a look at the volcanic rocks first, which are 460 million years old. Then we'll go to Erisag Park and walk down to the shore to look at the sedimentary rocks, which are the world's best continuous exposure of 440 to 404 million year old seafloor. Here at the lighthouse, we can see red rocks and gray rocks. These were once lavas poured out of a volcano 460 million years ago. Further down the shore, we'll take a look at a spot where soil horizons develop between lava flows. When you take a closer look at the red rocks, you can see bands of light and dark colored minerals. These are flow bands created when the lava was being poured out. Occasionally you can see stretch mineral fragments. Through here you can see stretch mineral fragments. Some are pumice. Pumice is the uh, froth of a volcano, so they get stretched out, and occasionally you can see areas where the flow bands get contorted and folded around. These lighter colored veins of a mineral called barite were deposited after the lava cooled, and probably even as the result of perhaps uh, geyser eruptions. These dark gray rocks are also lava flows poured out 460 million years ago. They are darker in color because they have more iron and magnesium than the previous ones we saw. The greenish tan color is the result of weathering of the rock today. When the lava was being poured out, bubbles of gas became trapped in the lava as it cooled and crystallized. Later, solutions passing through these holes deposited minerals within them and we can see those minerals here. Here you can see a green mineral. This is a green mineral called epidote. As the lava was cooling and fracturing, hot solutions working their way up from below would deposit this mineral in those cracks and crevices, and perhaps these were the basis of more geysers. Four hundred sixty million years ago, this particular soil horizon developed. Studies have shown it takes about two hundred years for a soil horizon to develop. You can see it's very well developed here at the top of the soil horizon. But when it was first starting to form, there were a lot of bits of boulders and cobbles of broken up lava mixed in with it. Then the, this lava flow was poured out on top of that soil. This tells us that land plants were very rare at this time. Just along the road from the village, we come to Airsag Picnic and Interpretive Park. This picnic shelter has an interpretive display and is a great place to learn about the rocks and fossils that can be seen along the shore. The rocks in the picnic park are between 440 to 404 million years old. 
This is an interval in time that geologists call the Silurian to Early Devonian. Here along the 10 kilometers of shoreline, the rocks record 36 million years of continuous deposition on the seafloor, the most complete record of this age in the world, worthy of a Guinness World Record. This panel shows where the trails are and how to get to the shore, the location of our next stop. This is where the Ersag Brook used to flow to the sea prior to 1897. We're here on the shore below the picnic park. We've got to be careful of two things here today. First of all is the nature of the tide. Is it high tide or low tide? Always be aware of the nature of the tide, whether it's in or out. And also, you see it's rather stormy, so it's a bit windy. The other thing we have to be careful of is rocks falling off the top of the cliff that might hit us. So it's always wise to start out walking along the beach and anywhere along here, away from the base of the cliff, so that if anything falls off the top, it's not going to hit you. This is an amazing spot, because here we have preserved the ancient seafloor, the first rocks or the first sediments to be laid down after the volcano has finished erupting. And every step we take along the shore, we're going through thousands and thousands and thousands of years of time. These rocks are interesting because they don't have any fossils. There's absolutely no fossils in this whatsoever. And that tells us that there was no oxygen on the seafloor here where Nova Scotia was 440 million years ago in this locality. No life preserved at all. This is today's Ersag Brook. It started flowing through here in 1897 when today's shoreline eroded back and the stream broke through. At times, the stream disappears into the beach cobbles. Across the brook and along the shore, the rocks contain more and more fossils the further along the beach we travel. just a little further along the shore and you can see these little thin beds of muds and silts laid down on the seafloor. Nothing in the way of life preserved in these particular beds right here. Further along we'll see some evidence of life that we, we can uh, find easily. But this tells us that the weather was still fairly calm at this time because these beds are undisturbed, very linear and continuous. As you're walking along the beach, be sure to keep your eyes open. There are all sorts of geological treasures. Some of them may even contain fossils, like this one. This is a neat block because it has tiny little fragments of fish fossils. These are fish scales from some of the earliest fish that were on the face of the planet at this time. This is not from this exact locality. This was washed to this position by the tides and the storms brought it from kilometers from the, down the shore. And we put some water on it because sometimes that makes things more visible. And here's another one you might want to mention. Well, that's neat. That, this is a coquina. A coquina is a series of broken up, shattered shells. These are the shells that were left over after the storms went through. And again, this is a piece that came from further up the shore. And it, very good evidence of massive storms having gone through this area 440, 430 million years ago. And if we had a weak acid and dripped a little bit on it, would we get some kind of reaction? If you put hydrochloric acid on this rock, it will bubble and fizz. It's a neat reaction. It tells you that there's calcium carbonate in the rock. And the calcium carbonate reacts with the hydrochloric acid to form carbonic acid, which bubbles off as the CO2. Uh, is released and nothing but water is left behind. Sometimes you can get a reaction with a concentrated vinegar solution as well. IOC have this interesting looking rock from down the shore. It's actually a piece of 360 million year old basalt that's lava and it's known as a vesicular basalt and you can see all the little holes in it. 
which were actually gas bubbles that formed when the hot liquid magma or lava was cooling and it froze those gas bubbles in place. So we call it vesicular basalt because of all the little vesicles in it. So it's kind of cool and has an interesting shape because it's been tossed and rolled around by the energy of the waves and rounded off. And in some cases you actually can find these little pockets filled with other minerals. And that's another different volcanic rock as well. Remember that with every step you are traveling through time, walking over younger and younger sedimentary rocks composed of sand and mud, which are now sandstone and mudstone. Each step takes you through thousands of years. We're about 10 meters further along the shore and this block had fallen off of the cliff face from up above and is actually upside down. The reason we know it's upside down because this is a whole row of broken shells. There's another whole row of broken shells and they actually filled up a trough between waves and the sand on the seafloor. So these were laid down after a storm went through and killed off all of the life. These are broken shells and bits of evidence of the life of the time. Very interesting because these round features here are actually brachiopod shells, similar to clams, but uh, with different shaped shells. You know, the clams have the same shell like that, but brachiopods have shells like this, and they used to attach themselves to the seafloor. There's also little features here known as tentaculites, and they're an interesting evidence of life of the time because nobody knows what they were. They're an unknown life form. So there's a lot of things yet to be discovered and described. This is a wonderful block of evidence of the storms and life preserved at the time. This rock has an interesting story to tell. The raised lines on the surface are evidence of past life and are known as trace fossils. These burrows are a trace fossil called Paleophycus and may have been made by early worms or a relative of modern day shrimp over 400 million years ago. The environment at that time was ideal for these organisms. In some rocks from that period, there are so many burrows that you can't see the layers of bedding anymore. As I was walking along the shore, I picked up this rock, which has some neat little brachiopods in it. I can see a lot more detail with this lens I have around my neck. You'll see geologists using these all the time. You use it by bringing the lens up to your eye and then bring the specimen into view close to the lens. Once you have the specimen in focus, you'll see it in a lot more detail. Wow, this little fellow was really impressive, so don't be deceived by their size. You might want to get your own hand lens or a magnifying glass to explore things a little more closely. On this big rock face behind me, you can see some large cracks in the rocks. And in fact, there have been some movements along these cracks and they're called faults. And when the, the two pieces of rock move against one another, you can imagine all that grinding motion breaking the rocks apart. Well, sometimes it actually leaves some material behind, which is quite loose. And it's called fault gouge. And it's actually all mashed up kind of muddy mixture of broken up rock material. These areas are really easy for the ocean, ice, waves, water to erode. And these cliffs, as you can see, are eroding really quickly. But I'd also like to show you some other faults over here. And this one isn't my fault. So you can also see these breaks in the rock. And a fault, by de definition, is where there's been a movement in the breaks. And what's really interesting is if you follow the layers across, you actually can see that some of the layers are offset. And that shows you that one piece has dropped down or another has lifted up. And that shows that there's been movement on the Earth's surface. We, in fact, have had earthquakes here in the past. The work of erosion. There's always going to be new rock exposed. And so that's just something to think about uh, in terms of all the new things that may surface on the beach. Below the land surface we live on, 
There are deposits laid down by melting glaciers some 12,000 years ago. These glacial deposits sit on top of the bedrock surface of our Earth's crust, and all are being eroded by wind, rain, and waves. I'm standing at the base of what's referred to as a scree slope, loose debris that's been washed down from above. This debris originally comes from glacial material, you can see at the top, full of rocks and cobbles and boulders, all rounded and uh, really uh, well shaped, and lots of evidence that they were carried in a glacier. The glaciers passed this way from 2 million years ago to 12,000 years ago, and the glaciers came and went probably five or six times. Each time they did, they scoured the Earth's surface and scraped boulders, debris, picked up rock, everything. And then when they finally melted away 12,000 years ago, they left the debris on top of the bedrock surface. And you can see the bedrock surface here is well displayed and the glacial material on top. And when you look at the glacial material, it's composed of cobbles and boulders from, not from this location, but from probably 10, 15, 20 kilometers away. So that when the glaciers melted, the debris just dropped out and settled on the rock surface. Fossil crinoids can be found in the rocks further down the coast. Crinoids are also known as sea lilies and resemble plants in being attached to the seafloor. But they are actually animals distantly related to today's starfish and sea urchins. Complete crinoids are rare, but pieces of the stems are more common. This is what the seafloor at Airsag may have looked like after the storm. In the cross section, you can see the U-shaped tubes formed by worms and a clam trapped in its burrow. This is a cross section of how the seafloor looked after a storm went through, killing off all the creatures and leaving only their empty shells and traces. Large waves of sand were deposited on top of the dead creatures. And life then returned and left its own traces and remains. Trilobites are well-known three-lobed arthropod fossils distantly related to the horseshoe crabs of today. Straight-shelled nautiloids resemble today's squid. The storm left a layer of broken shells of brachiopods and gastropods seen here between the sand waves. The calmer waters allowed life including crinoids, trilobites and nautiloids to re-establish itself. When we put all of the information we discovered from the rocks and fossils together, we can imagine what the Silurian seafloor at Erisag may have looked like 440 million years ago. When visiting Erisag during the summer, don't forget to drop into the Lobster Interpretation Center and Dockside Cafe. You may want to allow time to have a swim too. Be sure to take a look at the beach sand which is composed of the eroded rock formations. We have traveled through time. We've walked on lava flows that formed before Nova Scotia was ever part of North America. We've looked for fossils, and we've seen evidence of devastating storms and their impact on the ebb and flow of life. Most impressively, we've covered 440 million years, and we don't feel a day older. For further information about air sag and earth science, be sure to check out the Atlantic Geoscience Society website. Fossils in Nova Scotia are protected by law. You can get a heritage research permit from the Nova Scotia Museum of Natural History.